Now comes what I think is really awesome. We're going to talk about the time difference as you come closer or farther away from a black hole. Uh, so what we can do, we can use this equation right here. So we can say that um, this delta t equals delta t0 over square root of 1 minus rs over r. Let's define a few things. So we've got delta t. That's going to be the time measured by someone who's far away from that black hole. Delta t0, that looks like a proper time, doesn't it? That's going to be the time near the black hole, so time measured. Then we have your Schwarzschild radius. Remember, that's your event horizon. That's the distance from which, uh, you know, not even light can escape. And then we have r, that's your distance from the black hole itself, like from the center of it, at least. So this is actually really cool stuff. We're going to actually see an example of this. But I just wanted to show you this sort of a little bit in context. Have you ever seen the movie Interstellar? For example, uh, if you saw that movie in Interstellar, they have this big black hole. They call it Gargantua, oddly enough. It's supposed to be a big black hole. And that black hole, they had some uh, planets near it. I remember part of the th plot of the movie. I don't want to ruin it for you in case you haven't seen it, uh, but come on, get on it. Um, so this particular planet, as they get close to it, if, if they're going to go and spend some time on the planet, because it's so close to the black hole, in other words, time near the black hole, that one's going to be very different than the time for someone who's very far away. So what ends up happening is there's a whole problem with them that basically any minutes on that planet equal so much time for people farther away. So also on their spaceship that's further away, but also for people on Earth who are way farther away. Basically this idea, and this is true, this really does happen, that time is very different depending on how close or far you are from a black hole. Well, so this is the black hole equation, and we're going to do an example with it. But I just wanted to explain to you that this time uh, being different as you're closer to a gravitational object doesn't have to be just for black holes. This effect, although there's other equations for it, this effect holds true for near Earth. You know, as you come closer to the Earth, time ticks differently than further away. For example, if you ever heard of GPS, which a lot of people use, don't they? Um, so here we go. So GPS, so that stands for Global Positioning System. It's originally an American system, but now there's different uh, versions. There's a European and a Russian versions as well. But basically, the idea is there's a whole bunch of satellites that are in orbit around the Earth. They're in a pretty high orbit. They're not in geostationary orbit. Uh, what's that, around 36,000 kilometers? These GPS satellites are around, uh, if I remember correctly, they're around 20,000 kilometers in altitude. And they need to be moving around, and you need to see a certain number of them. I think it's four. Uh, I might be wrong, but I think it's roughly four you need to sort of see in order to get a good signal. And basically, as these things travel around, they send out signals, and your phone basically receives signals. And based on that, it can determine. There's a whole set of videos I could do on this. Basically, they can determine your location. And the longer you uh, wait to get your signal, then, you know, the better um, accuracy you can get. But it's usually good enough for, like, driving and stuff. They can do it pretty quickly. Why am I talking about this for black holes and time difference? That's because those satellites that are up at 20,000 kilometers away from, you know, the surface of the Earth... Uh, and add an extra 6.7, you know, uh, add an extra 6,700 uh, kilometers because that's the surface... So um, if we look at this, the fact that they're so high up, it means that their actual time, their clocks tick differently than ours do. Which means, and uh, it turns out GPS, you need to know uh, time. Time needs to be very accurate here. So what they have to do, they have to change or alter or sort of correct the time on these GPS satellites every day. Um, in fact, they're going to be off by so much uh, that each day or so, if they didn't correct for it, you'd be off by about 10 kilometers, which is a pretty big difference if you're trying to drive somewhere, but yeah, yeah, you're there. Like, I'm not at all there. So they need to correct for the time because the clocks on the GPS satellites here tick at different speed than the clocks on Earth. So there is this gravitational effect of time as well. Let's go back to the black hole equation. That's an interesting one. So now I have an actual example. It looks a little bit uh, much. Let's just look at this one. This is a bit mean. I know that your mom is so fat. I know those are really lame jokes, but uh, there's a lot of those online. And well, sorry, but there you go. So your mom is so fat says that all her close friends are seconds younger due to time dilation. I just put that piece because that's related to black holes. I like the kids spitting out their milk. It's not very correct uh, politically or otherwise to mention people's mamas, but there we go.
Let's actually look at this particular example. What's the mathematics in it? And I put in some real numbers, at least some numbers that you're going to end up with some real numbers. How's that? Uh, I made the other stuff up just to make sure that the numbers will work. So we're going to end up basically calculating the Schwarzschild radius of the black hole, and we're going to find out uh, the mass of the black hole. And this is going to be at the center of our own galaxy. So our own galaxy, where we live, called the Milky Way, at the very center of it, it's a place called Sagittarius A star. Oddly enough, it's in the constellation Sagittarius. So if you know where to look, there you go. You can get some great apps for your phone as well. So your smartphone, I have a galaxy, oddly enough, uh, at the moment at least. Uh, your smartphone, you know, you can get some apps that show you where things are. So you can find, if you find Sagittarius, you'll see that that's roughly where the center of our galaxy is. At the very, very center of our galaxy, there's what we call a supermassive black hole. And so we're going to actually calculate that thing's mass. Now, the way we calculate it is a bit contrived, so this is a bit made up here, because obviously none of this can happen, but we're going to end up with the real mass of it. So I sort of worked backwards, just to give you an interesting question. So you're on Earth, and you view a spacecraft, and that spacecraft is located 22 million kilometers from the center of the black hole Sagittarius A star. Okay, so that's your distance here. The spacecraft, this is the complicated sounding part, it has a clock that ticks once every second, which means if you're in a spaceship, you know, you have a clock and it ticks every second, no problem there. But the person on Earth, you know, that's you on Earth, you can detect the ticks of the clock of the craft. So in other words, somehow magically you can, you can tell what, what the clock is doing. Uh, obviously that's a little bit difficult, but... You know, this is the contrived part of it. Obviously, we don't go close to this black hole. We weigh it in different ways. Um, but to use this example here, you detect that the spacecraft clock ticks 117 times in three minutes. So the question is, what's the Schwarzschild radius? Well, first of all, we need this equation right here, right? Delta T equals delta T zero over one minus RS over R. So let's write that down first, all right? So we have delta T, let's write it down here equals delta t zero over one minus r s over r and it's square rooted isn't it yes so let's look at which letters are which okay so let's look at this if we look at this we have time from far away that's what we're measuring on earth if that makes any sense that's what we're going to measure on earth that's going to be the earth time whereas this one here that's going to be the time measured by someone close to it in this case the person who's close to the black hole so their time is going to be, well, let's see here. Their time, in, let's maybe do it for one second. We'll just figure out like how long is one second. So these guys are here. They're going to, people in the spaceship, we'll make that one second maybe because they're going to have one tick every second, like one little tick of their clock ticking along. But what do we see? We see that it clicks 110, 117 times in three minutes. So we need to find some way to use that information. So this right here, what can we do with that? Well, we can say that three minutes, uh, how many seconds is that, you know? Three minutes, let's see, there's 60 seconds in a minute. 60 times three is 180. So we have 180 seconds to have 117 ticks. So we can figure out then how many seconds go on, right? So basically we're gonna figure out that that is gonna correspond to, I divided them here, I get 1.5, let's say four seconds. So do you notice then, us, uh, we're going to we're going to detect more time. So it's like we age more, so to speak. That's the whole premise of this uh, interstellar movie, for example. So if we look at this one right here, then this is going to be our time. We're going to put that into here. So we can say then that 1.54 equals. Maybe I'll do it in different colors here, just to change it up here. Mm, I'll make it. Yeah, I'll make it blue here. So 1.54. We're going to say that's going to equal uh, the one second that's measured over, let's see, one minus RS, which we don't know. And we're going to be able to put in R because R is actually 22 million. I just want to leave it like this for now just to make it a bit simpler to look at. We can take our square root here, put it up to the top, and we can take the 1.54 and move it. So now we have one minus RS over R, square rooted, of course, equals one over 1.54. Now what I can do, I can square both sides. That's going to get rid of the square root. So let's do one over the answer and then do squared. I end up with, um, oh, wait a second, that didn't work at all. I needed to have, oh yeah, no, that's it. So I have something like uh, one minus RS over R is going to equal about 0 0.4225, something like that. 
Uh, now, if I do this, uh, what I can do is I can move the RS over R to the other side, move this to the other side. So I can do um, RS over R. It's going to equal, let's see, this moves to the right, this moves to the left, so I do 1 minus that answer. And I end up with something like 0 0.5775, something like that. So don't forget what R is. We now, I think it's a good idea to put in what R is. We can actually plug it in now. This is, uh, R is 22 million kilometers. So don't forget, this is 22. Million is times 10 to the 6, but don't forget about the kilometers. That's 10 to the 3. So that's from the kilometers. So I multiply this by 22 times 10 to the 6. Multiply that by 1,000. I end up with an answer of... The Schwarzschild radius is going to be 1.27 times 10 to the 10 meters. So that's actually going to be, uh, well, that seems pretty big, but it also is a big black hole. And this is actually, this is one of the numbers that we actually use for the sh uh, Schwarzschild radius or the event horizon of our own galaxy's black hole. It's roughly this, at least some people think, think it's this. Some methods of determining it show this. Obviously, this method is contrived. We don't have a spaceship near it. Right, so that method is contrived, but I've tried to devise it so the answer is something that is real. So calculate the mass of the black hole now. We want to actually figure out what is its mass. Now, how can we actually do that? How can we find the mass of a black hole? Well, remember, we can find, we can use this Schwarzschild radius to help us out. Don't we have an equation for the Schwarzschild radius here? We have Rs equals 2gm over c squared. Let's actually put that in. So we have Rs, I'll put that in a different color here. We have Rs equals 2gm over c squared. And we have Rs, now we have the Schwarzschild radius, it's this number. So to do that, we can just get the mass, can't we? The mass of the black hole then will just be Rs times c squared. All that divided by 2gm. I just have to put in these numbers. Um, oops, sorry, not 2gm. That's silly of me. There's no m needed. There we go. So if we do this, let's just uh, put in the numbers here. So I have this number right here that I just got, 1.27 times 10 to the 10. I multiply that by the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8. Don't forget to square that. A lot of people forget the squared part. Divide that by 2 times g. g is a gravitational constant of the universe. That is uh, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. And I'm going to put all that into my calculator and see what I get. So I'm going to multiply my last answer that I just had for RS. I'm going to multiply it by, in brackets, 3 times 10 to the 8 squared. I'm going to divide that answer by 2. I'm going to divide that answer by 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Negative, I mean, not negative. Um, and I end up with a pretty huge number, right? I end up with 8.57. Uh, times 10 to the 36 kilograms. Now the question asked it in solar masses. In other words, you know, compare it to the mass of the sun. Now we're told here that the mass of the sun, maybe I'll do this conversion here. So I need to know how many kilograms. I want kilograms to cancel out here. So I can say 2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. That's for the sun. Right? So this here, that would be for, uh, we could say, a mass of the sun. That would be one mass of the sun is this many kilograms. So that means then the mass of the black hole, let's just put that in. So we have this answer divided by 2 times 10 to the 30. I end up with, uh, let's see, 4.3 times 10 to the 6 times the mass of the sun. What this means by the way, uh, I think I've done it right, because at least the answer seems about right. This is kind of mind-blowing. This is the real answer. We think that the black hole at the center of our own Milky Way galaxy has a mass of about 4.3 times 10 to the 6 times the mass of our sun. Now remember, 10 to the 6 is a million. So we think it's got 4.3 million times the mass of our sun is the mass of this super massive, that's why we call it that, black hole at the center of our galaxy. Isn't that just like amazing so that's what's sitting in the center of our galaxy in fact uh, just to go a little bit further you don't need it for the syllabus I just think it's awesome and mind-blowing pretty much every um, galaxy that you look like that's like ours that you look at that's like ours so um, if it has to be a spiral galaxy they pretty much all have supermassive black holes in the center of them so that makes us think wow 
do those things cause galaxies or do galaxies cause those things? And we can actually see that two different galaxies, uh, sorry, um, black holes, they can actually sort of spiral inwards to each other. And as they do this sort of cosmic dance, they're going to send out these massive gravitational waves. Those have, at least at the time that I record this, those have just been detected in um, different uh, gravitational wave um, observatories. So they can actually now just start to detect these gravitational waves. So this stuff is real, which is insane.